So let me ask you about this. I mean, just in terms of of, of the non-aggression uh, principle, how do you how in um, the the world that you imagine how how does one maintain property rights? Well, uh, in my view, as a anarcho-capitalist, there would be um, uh, private defense agencies that had police forces or armies. And uh, if you stole my wallet, for example, let's say, uh, and my wallet is legitimately mine, um, the, I would call the police. I would call the private police agency, and uh, they would come get you and you know, make you disgorge the wallet and, and uh, punish you according to libertarian punishment theory. If I were a minarchist, I would just call the government, and I'd say, hey, um, Sam stole my wallet. Go get him. And uh, if Sam said, no, I didn't really steal it, then we would have to adjudicate it through the court. Now, so in... Uh well, okay, that raises a couple of questions for me. I mean, the first being that, I mean, who gets to determine if uh, you're not a minarchist or, or uh, the Min -min minarchist? A minarchist. If you're not a minarchist, who gets to determine uh, whether or not I really stole your wallet? Well, uh, we would have a series of competing courts. And um, let's suppose you deny that you stole the wallet. You claim that I stole it from you yesterday and <laughs> you're just repossessing it or, or something like that. Well, you would go to your court, uh, call it Court A, mm -hmm. and you would invite me to go to Court A, and I'd say, what, Court A, that's your brother or your mother. I'm not going to Court A, and, and I would go to Court uh, F, F is in Frank, and um, uh, I would invite you to come to my court, and you'd say, what, <laughs> Court F? That's your mother, your brother, your friend, uh, whatever, I'm not going. And... Um, uh, now it's, and then we would each go to our own courts. And now it's possible that both, and when you go to a court, you sign an agreement that you'll obey or abide by what the court says. Now it's possible that both courts will agree with you, in which case it's sort of case closed. You know, both courts and police will, you know, uh, come after me because they both agreed with you, or vice versa. It's possible that both courts will agree with me, in which case, you know, you'd better give me that wallet back because not only my court, but your court dash police will come after you. Okay, so the more interesting case is suppose the courts disagree. Now, one possibility, which we won't consider, is that my court agrees with you and your court agrees with me. Let's forget about that for the moment. And let's assume that your court agrees with you and my court agrees with me. Now, Ayn Rand, who is a minarchist, uh, says at this point, blank out, you know, you anarchists, libertarians. By the way, the, the, the debates among libertarians are pretty ferocious. Uh, she says, blank out. Uh, then what happens? You know, the, the courts fight. And the answer to that, uh, coming from my quarter of uh, libertarianism, is no, no, no. There are two types of courts. One type of court, we call them legitimate courts, are courts that will anticipate court A and court F will uh, recognize each other as courts and will say, look, you know, if ever we come up with a uh, a dispute, and uh, we uh, come up on the opposite side of the, this dispute, uh, let's go to court C, as in trolley, and, uh, or uh, take a random number, you know, we'll have 15 courts that we all agree are legitimate courts, and we'll pick one of them, and uh, their decision will be final, and that'll settle it. On the other hand, there might be bandit courts, and bandit courts are either too stupid to realize that they might be on opposite uh, sides of an issue, or they say, I don't care, you know, my way or the highway. And the point is that the bandit courts would have to fight everyone. They would have to fight other bandit courts and legitimate courts, whereas the legitimate courts would only have to fight bandit courts. And the point is that fighting is expensive. They'd have to pay more for their soldiers or their policemen. And uh, presumably they would, uh, you know, go the way of the dodo bird. Uh, we wouldn't have too many of them, or at least it wouldn't be as bad as... Uh, as uh, present government, so that's how it would be settled if you and I had a dispute as to whose wallet it was. Which so wait, so it is carried on case the property rights. All right, so let me see if I understand this. In the scenario where my court is not one of those courts that agrees to um, subsume its authority to Court C, right? Not your court, but a court that we mutually agree upon that would uh, adjudicate our discrepancy. Um, yes. Assuming that my court is not one of those, really its legitimacy is just simply a function of how big of an army I have. Well, I wouldn't say it's a, a function of how big the army is. I would or say how much money I have, because you're saying that I would have to fight everybody 
and it would go the way of the dodo board if I don't have uh, a dodo bird, if I don't have enough money to support that army that could fight everybody. Well, I don't think it's either a matter of guns or money. Uh, I think uh, the pen is mightier than the sword because the pen determines in which, they, which way the sword is uh, pointed. And I think legitimacy is very important. And, you know, the whole society would look upon your court, not you, but your court as sort of as a bandit court and wouldn't have much legitimacy. I mean, even the mafia had some sort of legitimacy. Okay, but let's say would... it doesn't. Uh, let's say the society says, we're, we're not going to legitimize your court. And I say, okay, I don't care. I didn't steal your wallet, according to my court, which uh, I think is actually the only legitimate court. Then what happens? Uh, then it's war. Then we have a little bit of a fight. So, I mean, I mean, I guess for me, what you're outlining is sort of like feudalism to me, right? I mean, and because, and even before we get to that point, what's interesting to me is this notion of like, um, just the idea that you could, I mean, we call it a wallet, but let's say the, you know, a house, or let's say not even a house, a piece of land, something that existed before uh, you claimed ownership to it. When you claim ownership to something, aren't you basically just saying, like, I have a legitimate right to exercise violence in the protection of this area that I have claimed for myself? And you've just sort of, I mean, that seems to me to be uh, contrary to your non-aggression principle. Well, uh I, I, I would uh, offer you a friendly amendment. Uh, it's not so much feudalism. What you should have said is more Hobbesian, you know, uh, uh, Hobbes, uh, uh, where it's a war of all against all. I, I, I imagine you'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Uh, feudalism wasn't th that uh, warlike because the king would sort of tell the dukes to, you know, shut up or something. I imagine that's uh, what would happen, though, in this scenario, right? I mean, because that's what you were saying is that uh, you, we would, uh, if we didn't agree to court C, well, court C, it sounds like to me, is the king. You and I are the dukes. And uh, there may be other courts that we function in that way, but whatever. I mean, uh, let's, uh, let's continue. Well, I was just offering a friendly amendment that, you know, it's really the Hobbesian world that you're alluding to, not so much the feudal. But if you want to stick to feudal, that's okay. And also, I agree with you, it doesn't really matter whether it's a wallet or a house or land or anything. I was just using as a wallet as a, uh, as a paradigm case of property that people could dispute over. Uh, but I, I disagree with you. Uh, and, and by the way, this debate that we're now having is a, a ferocious debate within libertarianism between the minarchists and the anarchists. And you are taking the minarchist uh, point of view. And I will make, now take the anarchist point of view and say, look, the logical implication of your minarchist libertarian view, I'm glad I've converted you to minarchist libertarianism. I'm just kidding. Uh, right now, the, uh, uh, China and uh, Colombia are in a state of anarchy with each other. Right now, Brazil and Burundi are in a state of anarchy with each other. Right now, the U.S. and, um, I don't know, Australia are in a state of anarchy because there's no world government. And uh, logically, your position, if you say, well, you know, if we have uh, decentralized uh, court uh, police systems, you're going to have a Hobbesian or a feudal world. Well, the logical implication of that is we have to have a world government. Because if you're afraid that court A and, and F will, will not abide by court C, and each one will say, my way or the highway, or, you know, I'm right in the hell with you, well, then uh, we really need a world government. Because right now there's anarchy between, I don't know, about 250 countries. And yet, of course, there's a problem with, uh, with world government. Uh, namely, uh, you know, look, we're both Jewish. And uh, we know that the uh, Jews are wandering Jews. <laughs> we wander from one place to another because, you know, one dictator doesn't like us much. At least we go somewhere else. Uh, you know, Hitler arises or what's happening in France arises and we go to Israel or the United States or somewhere else. But if there were one world government and, uh, I don't know, uh, China and India, you know, if it was democratic, uh, those two countries would would have a you know a big say and there'd be no place for us jews to go to so uh, and i don't mean to make it just a jewish thing but you know anyone who uh, is on the outs from the powers that be uh, likes the fact that that we have a little bit of decentralization whereas you minarchist libertarians sam are uh, you know uh, uh, logically implied to, to favor world government and i think that that's a problem well i mean uh... 
I, I don't know that you've really addressed uh, what what I said. I mean, I mean, there are. I mean, I think. Look, I think the world is better off for having the UN. I think that there is. Um, I wouldn't mind actually, uh, and I don't have a problem with the the series of uh, of of, uh, of uh, sort of I guess um, uh, of treaties uh, and regimes that we have in the context of those regimes. They're not uh, as enforceable, and then sometimes they do lead. Uh, to war, and I do think that's problematic. But um, you know, things like the uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, you, I agree. There's only so much that, uh, when the context of international relations, that we can, uh, when we're talking about uh, major countries, that we can uh, really uh, create a a, a regime uh, that um, that functions. And I think we're doing our best. But that doesn't really, I mean, that doesn't address. The, the idea of, of, of property as it speaks now. I mean, I mean, when you have the ability, and in fact, you know, look, that's when it, it is a, the notion of property and national boundaries, I agree on some level, is completely arbitrary, right? And it just so happens that's where the Chinese have enforced it through, uh, through weapons, and same with the United States, I guess, too. But 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 that doesn't address my question. How does the non-aggression principle reconcile itself with the idea that you can claim ownership of something? Because it is only that ownership, that property right that you um, that you exercise, is simply basically your way of saying I have the ability uh, to uh, to be aggressive if you attempt to uh, take what I have decided is mine. Well, you're sort of, I think, veering dangerously close to the <clears throat> argument of might makes right and accusing me of favoring that view that might makes right, but I don't uh, uphold that view. Uh, my view is uh, that there's justice and there's right, and, and sometimes uh, justice and righteousness uh, lose out in the war. I mean, you know, uh, sometimes the bad guys win uh, unhappily. Uh, so I, I don't think that might makes right. I think Where that do property is, rights come from is really what I'm asking, I think. In, in the, well, in, and how does that not involve aggression? Well, you know, you have to distinguish between violence and, and aggression or violence and invasive aggression. I mean, uh, libertarians are not uh, pacifists. We don't believe, well, some might be pacifists, but you need not be a pacifist uh, to be a libertarian. You can believe in self-defense or other defense. Uh, you know, if I come after you with a knife, uh, you have a right to shoot me uh, because I'm violating your property rights in your person. But wait a second. You that's is that's what's interesting to me is that that your uh, your personal integrity is a property right. That seems to me to be fairly arbitrary. I mean, if I take a knife, let's say, and walk onto your property and stab your ground, uh, I don't think that uh, that is the same as coming at you as a human being. And but it seems like you're saying that those are the same things. Well, I wouldn't say they're the same. I would say that they're, they're both property rights. One is a much more important property right of mine, uh, me, my body. Uh, and if you, you know, put a knife into my body, you're really violating a very, very important piece of my property right. On the other hand, if you just step on my lawn and maybe uh, throw a knife into my lawn, well, yeah, I think you've also violated my property rights, but a much less important property right of mine. Well, let me ask you this. We all... the the. Uh, if I will, for the sake of argument, call them both property rights. But one is a property right that every single human being has, which is their own person by definition. Yeah. And yeah. the property right to what you consider your property, that to me seems to be not inherent in every person because every person doesn't own a piece of land. So I'm, so I'm curious. Uh, it's quite obvious how the first one uh, is arrived at because everybody is a human being. Uh, they, they are themselves. It's quite uh, d uh, clear as to who they are. Um, but how is it that you establish that you own this land without it being a function of uh, violence? Okay, well, uh, let, me, um, uh, let me answer it in this way, and I think that's a very important uh, question. Um, first, uh, 
I don't know if it's a concession or not on your part. I think maybe it's not, but it's a very important point that you made that we each own ourselves because there are people who deny this. For example, the Nazis denied that uh, Jews and gays and, uh, 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 you know, Romani and uh, blacks and non-Aryans really own themselves. And the issue of slavery, uh, there were some people who said that other people really don't own themselves, but we own them. And uh, in the case of prostitution, not prostitution, sorry, rape, uh, the rapist, in effect, is saying to the rape victim, you know, you don't really own, or at least all the property rights in your person. I own some of them, namely the right to, to abuse you in, in this sexual way. So that's a very important point. And, and from this, libertarians would deduce that slavery is an abomination, that kidnapping is an abomination, that uh, rape is an abomination. But, uh, but the point is that I have a right to self-defense. So again, I'm making you the bad guy. I hope you don't mind. Uh, first, I, I accuse you of stealing my wallet. Now I'll accuse you of coming at me with a knife, uh, as I did before. Now, if you come at me with a knife uh, with the intent to uh, stab me, you're in effect saying uh, that I don't have a right to exist, uh, namely that you own me in effect, that you can uh, determine what happens to me, and I can use violence so libertarians are not against violence. I can use violence to ward off your attack. Uh, and so, therefore, property rights uh, imply violence, not only property rights in land and, and in wallets and in houses, but even in persons. Namely, suppose uh, that there's this African guy and, and there's this uh, person, white person who wants to enslave him and bring him to the United States. Uh, they're both using violence, only I would say one is using justified violence, namely uh, defensive violence, and the other is using uh, aggressive violence, and libertarians are only against aggressive violence. So that would be one point. The, the other point is, well, how do you get to own non-person property or, or non-human uh, property? And here, libertarians pretty much rely on John Locke, another famous philosopher, uh, along with uh, Hobbes. And what Locke said is, if you mix your labor with the land, uh, you sort of imprint your personality on the land. So you go out, to, you know, to, and you sort of homestead, and and you uh, put in a crop, and uh, and you know, you you take care of the land. You knock down a few trees. You get rid of a few rocks, and you put in a a cornfield or something. Well, then you own that land. That would be the libertarian defense of that. Well, um, okay, uh, the. I, there was there's a couple things that stick out. One is I think that you, I mean, from my perspective, calling one's personhood property is really sort of a semantics game that I think falls apart when you talk about like my right to exist, because uh, when I trespass on your property, uh, you know, from your perspective, I'm not questioning the right of that piece of land to exist. I'm just questioning your dominance over that land, which is clearly not a part of you. But how is it, I mean, if it's simply just a question of when you mix your labor <clears throat> with that property, it becomes yours, does that mean that if someone, I guess, inherits it, or if someone just, um, I mean, just doesn't do anything with the property, then there's no property right vested in it? Well, no. Uh, I, I would say that uh, Robert Nozick uh, is uh, sort of my guru or my mentor on this one. He talks about legitimate uh, title transfers to property, and he says that any uh, voluntary uh, transfer is legitimate. Uh, for example, uh, I put in this corn crop, and, uh, and you uh, domesticate a cow, and you capture the cow, and you domesticate the cow, and now you get some milk out of the cow. And now what happens, I trade you some corn for some milk, and now I own the milk even though I didn't produce it, and you own the corn even though you didn't produce that. And yet I would say, along with Nozick and every other libertarian, that I now have a legitimate title to the uh, milk because I can trace it back to uh, an agreement with you to trade, you know, have this barter, and also to original homesteading. Namely, you're the legitimate owner of the milk because you domesticated the cow, and I'm the legitimate owner of the corn because I, uh, you know, homesteaded the cornfield. Uh, so that would be one legitimate title transfer trade. Another one would be gifts. I give uh, some corn to you as a birthday present. Or I give my son the, the cornfield uh, as inheritance. That's just a gift after death or a gift uh, as, you, as you're passing away. Or gambling. I bet you on the, the Super Bowl and, and I lose and uh, you get some corn. Uh, I bet you some corn against some milk. And uh, that would be another legitimate title transfer. But the point is, suppose I now, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, 
uh, homestead the cornfield, and then I go away for a year or so, uh, do I have to keep homesteading it? And that's a, a debate among libertarians, and in my view is once you own it, you own it, period. And there's a very technical issue. Well, you know, suppose you go away for 50 years, then, you know, do you uh, give up ownership? And uh, I would say that's a very esoteric point among libertarians. But uh, you can have, uh, what do you call it, um, absentee landlords or absentee landowners. In other words, I uh, now uh, domesticate, uh, rather, I homestead the cornfield. And now what I do is I rent it out to you. You're my uh, my uh, farmer person. I make a, a, an arrangement with you. I'll let you... Uh, uh, you put the corn in. It's my field, but you put the corn in and you give me half the crop or something like that. Uh, you're a sharecropper. That would be a legitimate uh, but, uh, professor, uh, contract. Professor, I mean...